You know, sometimes you take a trip. You take a trip to find snakes. You take a trip to find snakes in a place you've never been. Like, say, West Texas. I am very well-rounded in the species that live around here. But book knowledge doesn't always translate into successful searching. So, what does? Hey, I see this mountain right behind me. That's what I'm going to be hiking up this morning. Uh, not sure if there's really going to be anything here. I don't really have any expectations for this. Uh, there are some caves and stuff like that way away, but I can't get to any of it. So I'm just going to be going to the top of this mountain and seeing what I can see. Uh, maybe scout it for a nighttime search. Maybe it'd be good to shine at night. I'm not sure. Uh, but that's what I'm going to go check out right now. Scouting. On trips, I'm gathering information, doing everything I can to improve chances while out filming. This was my typical go out, see the habitat, maybe a few species, and prepare some mental notes for filming type of hike. But I decided to bring my camera with me in case anything interesting happened. And uh, yeah, that was definitely the right call there. Also, while you're here, make sure to go ahead and subscribe. We make videos every single week. And while you're at it, make sure to leave a like for more West Texas content. Now with that out of the way, on to the video. Now, there is a slight chance of finding certain species up here. I wouldn't expect a western diamondback if I'm being honest. There are striped whip snakes out here, which is a really cool species. There's coach whips. Uh, as far as rattlesnakes go, I guess technically there's black tail rattlesnakes here, but this is a more uncommon habitat to see them in. And then you're also going to get leopards, aka mottled rock rattlesnakes. Those are definitely around, but spotting them during the day for one, they're going to be hiding under stuff and cracks and stuff. So the odds of me seeing one are slim to none. So really, I'm just thinking I'll hike this and, uh, you know, get some scouting in. This is a scouting mission. Very rocky little spot. Oh, there's a toad. Check that out. Oh, that's so cool. It's a Texas toad. That's awesome. I'm gonna get a little short segment with this guy because, uh, you know, this is a really cool animal. I haven't seen one of these yet. Have a look at this. This is a Texas toad. One of the more common toad species out here. Really big, really rugged. You'd think an amphibian wouldn't be able to survive out here, but they do perfectly fine. They eat all kinds of bugs. Look at that, he's croaking. Look at how fat he is. Really cool toad to be seen out here. There's also red spotted toads and a couple different spade puts. There's Mexican spade puts and a couch of spade puts. So toad and other amphibian species do actually live here in the Chihuahuan Desert. I don't believe there's any salamanders out here because uh, it's just a little bit too dry for that. It's just a little. But uh, toads are definitely rugged enough to survive in this kind of habitat. Really cool animal. I'm gonna keep hiking up the mountain and see what else I can find. So far, pretty typical. Getting some cool habitat shots, saw a toad, seeing some really cool lizard species as well. A nice morning outing. Finally, I made it to the top of this hill. Not super high, but a pretty decent hike. So I'm at the top, walking, just enjoying the view of town and the hilltops, and I kinda decided to start heading back. Now normally, I do not like wearing a GoPro, but it is a really good thing I was, because otherwise, I would have completely missed this. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yo, look at it! That's a model rock! That's a model rock rattlesnake. I just passed through here. Oh, and a post-editing note here, I walked right past this a second ago with the GoPro on, and you'll notice that the snake was not there just 60 seconds ago, meaning in the span of less than a minute, this snake crawled out, coiled up, and sat there. Just a very cool little FYI. I must have walked right past him. Oh my goodness. He is awesome. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, this is one of my main targets for the trip. That is insane. Well, we've got to get a full video with this. Uh, yeah, we're getting we're getting the full thing. We're we're gonna prep. Have someone film. I've got to call my dad from all the way down there. The poor soul. Oh my gosh. Here we go guys, this right here is a mottled rock rattlesnake. One of my favorite rattlesnake species out here in West Texas. Now they actually have a super toxic venom for how small of a snake they are. They're definitely not top five, but uh, 
This snake could put a hurtin' on you. Could potentially kill you. I don't know if there are any accredited deaths to a rock rattlesnake, but I'm not ready to find out right now, I'll tell you that much. So keeping a good distance from this snake is key. Beautiful species. They're actually very mild-mannered compared to other rattlesnake species, especially of this size. Typically the smaller ones are gonna be super whippy and uh, really obnoxious to deal with, but mottled rocks, very, very calm most of the time. He has got a full rattle. He has got a full rattle of one, two, three, four, five, six. He's got 10 beads on that rattle. And it's like that long. What a gem, yes! Now you can see, he matches the environment perfectly. I must have walked right past this snake. Now you can see those faded bands on the mottled rock. The mottled rock isn't gonna have as distinctive bands as some of the other species of rock rattlesnake. Now I can immediately tell you that this is a female because mottled rock rattlesnakes are actually sexually dimorphic. But females tend to have more patterning in between their bands. And while I'm not the most experienced with rock rattlesnakes, I would say there's a 90% chance this is a female based on that. Oh, she's moving a little bit. So what they do in the morning times, typically you're mostly gonna be seeing this snake at night, hunting along rock ledges or crossing the road. But uh, this is what they typically do. This is a natural chunk of their habitat. The top of one of these little rocky hillsides, this is what they're naturally living in. And uh, typically they're just gonna come out just for a little while, not even, not even an hour. They come out for a little while, sit wherever there's a really good amount of sunlight, soak it up, and then go back into his crack. In fact, I'd have to guess that uh, either this, this is a good little spot, or even that one over there, that uh, you know, he could have crawled out from right there and just sat right there, or crawled out from there and sat right there to get some sun. And he'll go right back into the cracks, you'll never see the snake midday, and then come nighttime, he'll be out cruising these rocks, hunting for lizards, mice, and pretty much anything he can get. Wow, what a stunner of a snake. Kind of reminds me coloration-wise of a speckled rattlesnake. I don't know why, but that kind of light blue, grayish coloration is uh, more reminiscent of speckles, which are way out west. What an absolute gem of a snake to be finding during the day. I did not expect to see that, I'm gonna be honest. I was kind of just out here messing around, uh, you know. That's, that's just insane. Notice how calm it is with the snake hook. This animal knows that that snake hook is not my hand. If I were to pick it up or try to grab it, it would be a totally different reaction and it probably would bite. Just out of self-defense, obviously the snake doesn't want to be messed with. But you can see, this snake really doesn't feel threatened at all. This snake does not feel threatened whatsoever. It's really good that I'm getting more experience with more rattlesnake species. I'm very used to the ones back home. I'm fairly used to pygmy rattlesnakes whenever I find them. And uh, I've gotten to deal with some of the larger rattlesnakes out here west. But uh, this, is a, this is my first really tiny, typical rattlesnake. I've gotten to deal with sidewinders, but uh, this one's a little bit more typical than a sidewinder. So every little bit of snake experience really does help. And uh, you know, the more I learn about these animals, the better I can present them to you guys, the better I can learn about them myself, and uh, you know, the better it'll help me with dealing with other animals. Because you learn things. You learn things dealing with certain species that you can apply to others. This is more like dealing with a really tiny canebrake rattlesnake if I'm comparing. It's not really like a pygmy. It's not really like a diamondback. It's much more akin to dealing with a super chilled out snake, but tiny. So it's really interesting. You know, you can compare all that information when you have it. What a spectacular animal. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to go and check out the one we did with the Louisiana pygmy rattlesnake. A really cool small species as well. And we will see you guys next time. All right, we're gonna go ahead and let this snake on its way. That is insane. See you, baby. <laughs>